What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now I'm headed out to do a search and recovery today. I've gotta to go find a young lady's cell phone for her. Uh, but to be honest, I'm not prepared for this. And I wanna make a video on what happens when you're out here diving and you're not properly prepared for say search and recovery work. It doesn't necessarily mean that you can't go and do the job because I'm gonna teach you the techniques that is going to help you still be successful but please understand the things that we teach in the search and recovery program we're teaching you how to run lines we're teaching you how to do search techniques and i don't have any of that with me today to go dive literally i've just got my summertime gear with me or what you guys see me teach with and that's it and we get a call hey young lady lost her cell phone she wants me to come get it unfortunately i can't go home and get what i need to begin with so i've got to go straight to the dive side so that's what we're going to do today i'm going to talk about not having the proper equipment but yet you still have a job to perform and i'm going to show you how you can overcome that as well but i've got a little bit of ways to get down the road here i'm going to jump in the lake and hopefully i'll be able to recover this young lady's cell phone so let me first start out by saying I do not advocate you going out and doing any type of diving that you are not trained properly or equipped properly to do. And that's not the purpose of this video, obviously, because I, I am going to be doing a search and recovery dive here without my typical tools. But what I want to focus on in this video is showing you with the right skill sets, you can still do successful search and recovery dives without having all the tools uh, that you normally would. Typically here, I would have some type of drop line or reference line. I would also have a real system that I could connect to the dock uh, and you know do a circle search or some type of sweeping search, which I don't have none of that with me. Like I said, this was one of those, hey, I dropped something in the water. Can you come out here real quick and help me out? And that's what I did. So of course, I'm gonna get a general idea of what the bottom's like during this search. And basically I've jumped in away from the search area. So I've come in from the side of the dock and I'm just gonna do a general search and kind of get an idea of what the bottom's like. Now, typically we always go off of what's called drop radius. Anytime a, an item is dropped in the water, it's gonna move or can move the equal distance to whatever the depth is. However, because I'm on such a very steep incline, I'm probably on about a 12-12 pitch here here, um, as far as the bottom is concerned that item could have actually moved a lot further and like I said I'm looking for a cell phone so as it's shifting and moving around it can actually go down this incline a little bit further than what that drop radius would have told me. So I'm just kind of doing a general search here, looking to see if I happen to see it. Now, one thing that I didn't talk about earlier, um, the young lady who dropped her phone, they were actually dragging a rake, uh, trying to hook it with a rake to bring it back up to the surface like a lot of people does. And so I was hoping just to be able to use my flashlight in a general area, kind of ping on it, get a glare, get some type of shimmer of light come back, and then that would let me find the phone but unfortunately i was unable to find it like that so i'm going to talk about how we can use whatever is on hand to help us locate what we needed now ideally like i said i would have loved to have had a reel and an anchor system here i could have literally just had her drop the anchor or the weight system down into the water right where her cell phone went down and then i could use that reel to tie it off and have a reference point to drop down and search man but unfortunately i didn't have it with me that day i am in my teaching rig and most time in my teaching rig in a three mil I'm not going to be having any weights with me just laying around so I didn't have any of that so I am going to have to improvise on this but I'm just like I said I'm doing a generalized search of the area to see what the bottom's like to see what the bottom composition like to see what the contour is like that's going to give me a better idea of how to conduct a search when I don't have a reel to do a circle search or a um, some type of sweeping search or anything like that but once I've got all that I'm going to come on back up to the surface here in just a minute and I'm going to create a drop line or a reference line out of whatever I can find. Now thankfully the homeowner here has um, basically a bunch of uh, poles like uh, boat poles and broom handles and things like that that I can kind of fashion together and create a drop line on. Um, it's not that deep so I only need something that's about seven or eight foot deep here that I can stick straight up and down and he can kind of hold him into place and that will create that downline or that reference line that I would normally use anytime I was doing a search and recovery in a situation like this. It's also going to kind of help me out as well. When we go up underneath docks and stuff, we can, it's actually easier to search under docks than what people realize because we can use the ambient light to help us navigate. I know that if I'm coming into more ambient light like I am here, I'm actually coming shallower and I'm coming out from underneath 
underneath the dock to where if it's a little bit darker, I know, of course, I'm going deeper or I'm swimming up underneath the dock system or a boat. So I can use that as a way to navigate and help me search as well. So searching under docks is really not that difficult as long as you've got uh, decent enough visibility to do it. But once I kind of get uh, my head right here and I decide, okay, it is a sloping bottom, but there is a lot of rock and stuff like that, then I'm also looking to see if I can see where he's been raking, because if I know where he's been raking, then of course, um, that'll kind of give me a general idea of where they lost it as well. And I can start to see the rake marks. Now, like I said, I'm going to go on up and I'm going to get me a drop line set here or a reference line set real quick. And then hopefully I'll be able to find the foam, as you can see course I found the phone almost immediately and you'll see that that pole right there that is the drop line or the reference line I set up for this but I'm gonna go ahead and bring the phone up hand it over to um, the young lady that lost it and hop on out of the water and kind of give her some instructions on how to protect her phone in the future as well but guys as you can see you can still have a very successful search even without the tools of the trade if you take your time you follow the steps you follow your skills and you trust your skills you can have a very successful search too So as you see guys, I was very successful. I was able to use the tools that were on hand at the site to help me locate this young lady's cell phone. Um, I've talked about drop location or drop radius in the past. Basically as an object falls, it's gonna move the equal distance, but that doesn't always apply. There's always gonna be some external force or external environmental condition that changes that. In a situation like today, we had a very, very steep incline. So even if that object was to fall the equal distance of whatever the depth was, that object can still roll around. And in a situation like today where they had been raking and trying to locate this, you can see it very easily got covered up, which made the search a lot more difficult as well. But guys, I want you to understand, you can still be successful doing a search and recovery as long as you understand how to do that search and recovery, even if you don't have the tools on hand, such as a reel or a line or anything like that to assist you. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it very educational. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.